Hey everybody, welcome to another installment of Rob Unscripted. This episode brought to you by the letter Q. Uh, because remember, without Q, we wouldn't be able to spell quiche. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, today we're going to talk about creating BIM, that's Building Information Modeling, uh, BIM-ready content from Autodesk Inventor. Um, again, I'm Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist, Tech Evangelist, whatever you want to call me today, for the Autodesk Manufacturing Industry Group. So without further ado, I'd like to present to you the latest and greatest in shading apparatus. I believe that's the plural, the Shade Master 4000. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we tried to get T-Pain, but uh, he was unavailable. He was uh, out somewhere on a boat. Yeah, so that's great, Rob. Uh, how did you get there is always the question. Uh, that's a great demo. That looks real cool. Probably took a heck of a lot of practice, and uh, you've been doing this for years and so on and so forth. And guys, it's, it's, it's so easy to get to that point if you just expand the use of your Autodesk tools today. So let's, let's regroup a little bit, and let's figure out where, uh, where we started. And we started from a 2D sketch, a series of 2D sketches. You can see here on the screen, I've got essentially a skeleton model. There's a couple lines on three different sketches, and I'm going to use the frame generator to build out this design. So as a designer, you know, when I grab a, uh, some standard components, I want to make sure that I'm grabbing standard off-the-shelf components. I don't want to be flipping through a McMaster car or something like that. Um, and uh, you know, putting stuff into my design that doesn't necessarily that I can't buy. So here, I've sketched out the skeleton model. I use Frame Generator to bring in standard off-the-shelf structural steel components. Have it create the geometry automatically, and then use some of the other tools. So here, I'm using a miter, miter the corners together. I'm not using geometry creation tools. I'm using engineering tools. I want to notch that particular piece of structural steel around this one. Uh, and then keep going with my design. Now, the nice thing about this this particular skeletal technique is, is if I do want to widen out the shading system, if I want to extend the outreach, if you will, of uh, of this of this arm, I can do so just by dragging those sketch lines around and having it update the design. So I mentioned earlier about how I was using an engineering tool and not a geometry creation tool. And I want to bring up another example is, is, is what I mean by the difference between an engineering tool um, and, a, and a drafting tool. Here, clearly, I need to put in some fasteners here. Um, but there's a couple things that you want to make sure when you're putting fasteners into a design. Is it, are they the right ones? Um, first off, can you actually buy them? Uh, are they to standard? And, and is this design going to actually hold up? So as I'm going through that process, um, I would sure like the engineering tool that I'm using to assist me in the process. So <clears throat> while I bring this over, you saw that I uh, selected an option for bolted connection generator. And in here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to validate my design. I'll go to ca calculation and make sure that I have the right diameter bolt for the particular load that it needs to hold up. So I'll put in uh, my load forces and it'll go through and it'll calculate the size bolt that I need for this design. Tell it the number of bolts that I have uh, that I want to place within this design and it'll then adjust. Now in this particular example along with most other examples you've got a washer on the front end you've got a washer on the back end uh, and you probably have um, some sort of, of, of nut in the back holding all of this together. So within the frame generator, uh, I'm sorry, within the bolted connection generator, uh, see I told you this was unscripted, I'm not even going to edit that out. I'll have it place those pieces of uh, those components for me automatically and there you go. Again, I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, modeling a uh, a bunch of parts really. I just, uh, just told it to place fasteners based upon the stresses and make sure they're the right ones. Um, place them automatically, create the geometry, and uh, I can move on to my next task. And my next task in this particular example is I want to create the uh, the tensile fabric that's going to uh, to make up the uh, uh, the bulk of the shading 
<coughs> for this particular uh, Shade Master 4000, whatever I called it earlier. Um, so here you can see I just essentially connected the dots in a, in a 3D spline. And now I'll just loft uh, these two sketch features, a 2D sketch and a 3D sketch. Um, to create the surface that's going to represent the uh, uh, the shading element of this of this design, um, thicken the material, um, and now I have a solid. So there, I'm able to quickly and easily bounce back and forth between uh, surface creation and solid creation. I didn't have to necessarily learn uh, a new set of tools. So I'll use that same 3D spline um, to. Uh, uh, to do a sweep and to have the representation of this uh, this high strength cable then that would be looped through these eyelets and so on and so forth um, it, don't judge my design guys this was, this was used uh, just for uh, just for informational purposes